In this next lecture on Fourier series, I will look at complex exponential Fourier series, conversions between rectangular and polar, and negative frequencies. Previously, we looked at the rectangular Fourier series and now the complex exponential Fourier series. This is the synthesis from the frequency domain coefficients to the time domain waveform, and this is the decomposition from the time domain waveform to the frequency domain coefficients. The integral here is from minus t over 2 to t over 2. With the rectangular, it was t0 to capital T, uh, from T0 to T0 plus capital T, meaning any period. Now it's very clearly shown as this particular range, but it could also be 0 to T or T0 to T0 plus capital T. And N is defined for integers from minus infinity to infinity. To convert the rectangular form of the Fourier series coefficients <clears throat> and to the complex form, these three equations would be used. To convert from complex form back to rectangular form, you would use these coefficients, these equations. Parseval's theorem is shown here for power signals. We'll come back to that. All right, so with complex exponential Fourier series, the synthesis and decomposition relations are on page 10. The conversions with rectangular Fourier series forms are on pages 11 and 12. Both methods could be used to find those CN complex coefficients, where n is all integers. For the square wave example, where a0 equals 0, A1 equals 0, and so on, up to A5 equals 0. B1 is 4 over pi, B3 is 4 over 3 pi, B5 is 4 over 5 pi. The even harmonics are 0. Um, <clears throat> the, this is, um, for the square wave example, by the conversion formulas, we can find the complex coefficients. We have already, we have evaluated the integrals, so uh, the integral for b1 as an example in the previous lecture. So here the complex exponential series Fourier, uh, co the, the, the coefficients for the complex exponential Fourier series can be found just from those conversion formulas. <clears throat> so and we'll have an example later, actually, of working out the integral. But the c minus 3 coefficient if, is 1 half a3 plus jb3. If we go back briefly, pardon me, the c3 would be, pardon me, the c, if n is 3, the c minus 3 would be a3 plus jb3 divided by 2. So c minus 3 is a half a3 plus jb3 divided by 2. Well, sorry, uh, a half a3 plus jb3. The a is 0, b is 4 over 3 pi, and so we get j over, j2 over 3 pi. And this j term can be represented as a, a phase e to the j pi over 2. c2 is 0, c minus 1 is similar except now b1 is 4 over pi instead of 4 over 3 pi. And we get j, you know, 4 over 2, we get j 2 over pi. And the j can be written as this phase magnitude 2 over pi, and the phase of the complex number is pi over 2. <coughs> c0 equals 0. c1 is for n equals 1. If we go back to that, those conversion formulas, for n equals 1, c1 is found from a1 minus j b1 over 2. So c1 is a1 minus j b1 over 2. And b1 again is 4 over pi, just like before, but now the formula changes a little bit. 
So we get minus j 2 over pi. The magnitude is still 2 over pi, but the phase shift is now minus j, which is e to the minus j pi over 2. c3 would be a3 minus jb3. b3 again is 4 over 3 pi, like it was up here, but the formula changes the, the sign, and so we get minus j 2 over 3 pi. The magnitude of the complex number is 2 over 3 pi, and the phase is phase for minus j is e to the j, e to the minus j pi over 2. And so these are the, comp, the coefficients of the complex exponential Fourier series, found by evaluating the rectangular and then doing a conversion. If we plot them now, the complex exponential Fourier series, the time domain signal is here, f sub capital T of t versus t, from plus 1 to minus 1, this part is 1, this part is minus 1, for the example I've been using where t is 1 millisecond and frequency is 1 over the period is the frequency is 1 kilohertz the frequency domain representation is shown here these are the magnitudes of the complex numbers and the angles of the complex numbers the frequency index is n for the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients they're all, they go for all integers. And if you remember previously, the magnet, well, the magnitudes were all positive. For C1 it was 2 over pi, for C3 it was 2 over 3 pi on the previous page. 2 over pi, 2 over 3 pi. The phases for C minus 3, C minus 2 are positive. The phases for C1 and C3 are negative. Those are shown here. So the, the magnitudes again, 2 over pi, 2 over 3 pi, 2 over 5 pi, and so on. 2 over pi, 2 over 3 pi, 2 over 5 pi. The phases are for n equals 1, it's minus pi over 2. For n equals 3, it's minus pi over 2. For n equals 5, it's minus pi over 2. The minus pi over 2 comes from the phase on the previous page here, e to the minus j pi over 2. The phase is minus pi over 2. Similarly, for c minus 1, minus 3, minus 5, the phase is plus pi over 2. And again, the even coefficients for this particular periodic signal happen to be zero. Well, there's a reason for that, uh, but they're, they're zero here. Now, the n equals 1 coefficient corresponds, in our example, to a 1 kilohertz sinusoid or sine wave, and th this corresponds to a 3 kilohertz. But now we have these negative frequencies, minus 1 kilohertz and minus 3 kilohertz. And the negative frequencies don't exist. They're a mathematical abstraction, but we'll come back to that. <coughs> so, the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients were just evaluated by taking the rectangular Fourier series and doing those conversions, but we can also just work out the integral. And this is the advantage of the complex exponential Fourier series. If we go back, there's only one integral for the complex exponential, whereas for the rectangular, there's three. This one's more intuitive and an easier way to get started with understanding Fourier series. But if you want to work out just integral, then just one integral, then this is a more compact representation. And so this is worked out in this example. <coughs> the c1 coefficient. And you can see the answer here is 2 over pi e to the minus j pi over 2. We've already found that. That was here, c1, 2 over pi e to the minus j pi over 2. It's this coefficient here, 2 over pi e to the minus j pi over 2. And for the rectangular series, it was just 4 over pi. The rectangular series only had positive values. In fact, I'll flip back to that for a moment. In the rectangular series, there were only, in the frequency domain, only had positive values. The b1 was 4 over pi. And these are, these actually exist, these frequencies. Whereas in the complex exponential domain, you have the negative frequencies. However, working out this integral c1, just to show that you get the same thing. So, <clears throat> the integral I put here as 1 over t, the integral from 0 to t, f sub capital T of t, e to the minus j 2 pi, 1 t over capital t dt. 
And the integral here is from 0 to t. On the formula that was typeset, it was minus t over 2 to t over 2, but any period will do, any period of width t. Going from, <clears throat> going from this line to this line, because f of t is, uh, has different values, this integral is broken up. Th instead of 0 to t, it's 0 to t over 2, t over 2 to t. But otherwise, what's in the argument of the integral, the integral is identical. Going from this line to this line, between t equals 0 to capital T over 2, f of t is 1. Between t over, capital T over 2 to t, f of t is minus 1. Working out this, um, and, and so those values are substituted in here. Evaluating this integral, you know, the integral of e to the x is just e to the x, and you can use complex numbers here. There's no division by 0. And so the integral here of, you know, e to the x dx is just e to the x, and so the integral here is the same, but if we were to differentiate it by the chain rule, this exponential would throw out a factor of minus j 2 pi over t, so we have a t over minus j 2 pi to cancel that out. And then we evaluate the integral between the limits of 0 to t over 2 here. The same is true over here, but now there's a minus 1 as well, but then the chain rule would put out a factor minus j 2 pi over t, and so that's cancelled out by this one, but we can get rid of the minus one. And again, that's evaluated between the limits, minus uh, t over 2 to t, t over 2 to t. Going from here to here, the t's cancel. Then capital T over 2 is put here, 0 is put here, t is put here, capital T over 2 is put here. The t's cancel, the 2's cancel, e to the minus j pi is just e to the minus j pi is just minus 1. e to the 0 is 1. e to the minus j 2 pi is 1. And e to the minus j pi is minus 1. Then the minuses cancel, there's a minus the minuses cancel, there's a 1, the minuses cancel, we're left with four terms that are all 1 over j 2 pi, so we get 4 over j 2 pi, or 2 over j pi, so the magnitude is 2 over, two over pi, this is 1 over j, which is the same as minus j, which is e to, can be written as e to the minus j pi over 2, a phase shift of minus pi over 2. And so we got the same value by evaluating the complex exponential Fourier series and it may be more abstract, but you only have to work out one integral. All right, so negative frequencies. These do not exist. Negative frequencies such as minus 1 kilohertz and minus 3 kilohertz do not exist. They are a mathematical abstraction. Sometimes they are convenient. The complex exponential Fourier series has only one integral, not three, like the, with the rectangular Fourier series. And to interpret the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients, which are defined over all integers, one can convert the CN back to AN and BN if you want. There was a f the formulas are shown here, converting CN back to AN and BN. I'm not going to go through that one. I've gone through the conversions this way. All right. <clears throat> There's another way to look at negative frequencies, observing them from trigonometric identities. From this identity, sine theta is minus e to the minus j theta plus e to the j theta divided by 2j. Sometimes you might see these two terms reversed. I wanted them this way because I want the negative frequencies on the left. Frequency is 1 over period, and consider the B3 coefficient. For the same example of the period is one millisecond and the frequency is one kilohertz. Consider B3 being converted to C minus three and C3. <clears throat> so,
b3 sine 2 pi 3 t over capital T is just rewritten here. The b3 coefficient is 4 over 3 pi. And 1 over t is just f. Then using this trigonometric identity, we write this as minus e to the minus j 2 pi f 3 f t and plus e to the j theta and theta is 2 pi 3 f t divided by 2 j. Going from here to here the terms are separated. There's a minus sign. This is this minus is put in here. This one is plus. This term is converted. The magnitude is 2 over 3 pi and minus 1 over j is the same as j which is equal to e to the j pi over 2. The magnitude is 2 over 3 pi. 1 over j is minus j, which is the same as e to the minus j pi over 2. And now this is the c minus 3 coefficient, and this is the c3 coefficient. c minus 3 was 2 over 3 pi e to the j pi over 2. This was shown earlier, the c minus 3 coefficient. 2 over 3 pi e to the plus j pi over 2. And the c3 coefficient on the positive side, 2 over 3 pi and e to the minus j pi over 2. 2 over 3 pi and e to the minus j pi over 2. Furthermore, these magnitudes of these complex numbers are multiplying the, the negative frequency term and the positive frequency term. This is e to the j 2 pi 3 ft. This corresponds to 3 kilohertz. This is e to the plus j 2 pi minus 3 ft. This corresponds to a frequency of minus 3 kilohertz. So we just converted this form that had 4 over 3 pi, a sine wave at 3 kilohertz, into this form which shows the negative frequency and the positive frequency. And you can always convert back. This demonstrates one of the conversions described in the formulas, but they're the same thing. It's just writing it out in more algebra. Sometimes using the negative frequencies are convenient. All right, Parseval's theorem. I believe this should be next lecture.